This is Paul from Electric Scooter Guide, the channel that tests more electric scooters than anyone. And this week we're reviewing the fastest electric scooter we've tested for less than $800, the new updated eMove Touring. Touring is a longtime favorite for commuting because of its long range. And this is especially true among taller riders and heavier riders because of its exceptionally high rider weight limit. It's also one of the most reliable e-scooters out there and we'll show you why later in this review. The Touring disrupted the scooter market when it originally came out because for the longest time you had your beginner scooters all limited to about 15 and a half miles per hour and a rider weight limit of about 220 pounds and none of them had suspension. And then the Touring comes along with you know, nearly the same price category but it's got full suspension, a much higher rider weight limit and its performance just destroys all the beginner scooters especially when it comes to hill climbing. Now, since then, many beginner scooters have bumped up their top speeds to 18 or even 22 miles per hour in the United States. Well, this new version of the Touring has a tested top speed that's gone way, way higher than that. And it has two other new updates. Here's everything we've learned from a week of performance testing on the 2024 eMove Touring. The Touring's retail price is $899, but it's on sale right now for $799, and you can take another $50 off the sale price with coupon code RIDERGUIDE. Plus, using the code and the link in this video's description helps support our channel and the testing it takes to make more videos like this one. The Touring comes in five colors, has a single 500 watt motor at the rear wheel, and a big 624 watt hour battery made with LG cells. That's 13% bigger than the generic battery used by the much more expensive 9 Bot Max G2. For those of you who are new to e-scooters, eMove is the in-house brand of one of the biggest US retailers, Voro Motors. Voro is based in Los Angeles, California, and has retail stores in LA, New York, and Hawaii. They're the folks behind the famous eMove Cruiser, the Roadrunner series, and of course, the flagship 72 mile per hour eMove Roadster. Because it has folding handlebars, the Touring arrives fully assembled. The only thing I needed to do was set the voltmeter at the right position and snug it down. It comes with full suspension, a rare feature at this price point in an unusual configuration. The front suspension has three springs, one in the middle and one on each side, and there are two more hidden in the back. For me at 165 pounds, the suspension feels a little stiff, but should be ideal for riders from about 180 pounds up to the 308 pound weight limit. Height wise, this scooter fits everyone from less than five feet tall to six foot six, cause the handlebar height is adjustable and the latest version goes taller than ever at 41.5 inches above the deck. In fact, they go so tall that I did the range test in the lower of the top two settings, which is 39 and a half inches tall. The adjustable bar height comes in especially handy if you order the optional seat. The Touring has tons of deck space too, the third longest deck of the 156 we've measured, making it really comfortable for long rides. It comes with a big swath of grip tape for extra traction too. The Touring comes standard with a trigger throttle, but there are also two optional throttles, a motorcycle style twist throttle that comes with a matching grip for the left hand side, and a thumb throttle similar to the one used on the Nami scooters. All of them are plug and play, so it's easy to swap back and forth, or if you don't want to mess with it, you can order the thumb throttle pre-installed. Both of the optional throttles come with a QSS4 type display, and all three throttles have a USB port on the back that successfully charged my phone. The key switch comes with two keys, and that switch stays the same no matter which throttle you choose. There are three riding modes. On the standard throttle, mode one limits you to 12 miles per hour, mode two goes 23 miles per hour, and mode three lets you access the scooter's top speed. When you turn it on, it remembers your last mode, but changing modes is a little quirky. You have to hit the power button, then select your mode, and then hit the power button again. So it's best to change modes while completely stopped. Over at the left handlebar, you have your brake lever, a bell, and the control pod for the center headlight and electronic horn. There's also a second set of lights in the deck controlled by this nice metal switch. Be careful though, these stay on even when the key is off. The center headlight on our scooter had a little rattle to it, but it's a quick fix with a rolled up piece of electrical tape or better yet, a little blob of silicone. And if three headlights aren't enough, Vora also offers an optional 500 lumen rechargeable headlight that attaches to the handlebars and costs $35. It comes with a USB cable so you can probably charge it by plugging it into the dashboard too. Or you can get the ultimate and add a thousand lumens by adding a shred light. And we'll put a link to that down below. We've got some great videos coming out soon about lighting and riding at night. So get subscribed and hit the notification bell so you don't miss them. So what's the touring like to ride? Well, performance wise, I'd classify it as a beginner to intermediate scooter. But in terms of required skill level, anybody's gonna be able to ride this because as fast as it is, the touring is an easy ride. The throttle's smooth. It feels exceptionally stable at speed 
speed, and it's very confidence inspiring in corners. One of the new updates is that they switched from a tubed tire to a tubeless tire on the front wheel. And I love the improved cornering feel and there's a reliability advantage too, since tubeless tires are much less prone to getting pinch flats if you hit a sharp edge while riding. The new front wheel is also way better looking than the old one, which was visually giving more wheelbarrow than an electric scooter. The rear wheel, on the other hand, has a flat proof solid tire. And the reason they mixed the type of tires is that 90% of flats happen at the rear wheel. So this eliminates almost all flat tires while preserving the traction and handling you get by using an air-filled tire for steering. The full suspension really smooths out the larger bumps, but I still notice the harder feel of the rear tire when riding over rough pavement. Let's talk about P settings. You can customize your throttle and braking response by digging into this menu, which you won't find mentioned in the owner's manual. You get into the menu by holding down the power and mode buttons at the same time. There are a bunch of P settings, but here are the ones you need to know about. Setting P5 to zero turns on zero start, so you don't need to kick off to get moving. P6 sets cruise control, which I don't recommend using unless you're doing really, really long distance riding. P7 is an important one. It lets you turn on quick acceleration. There are some videos out there that get this one backwards, but we're gonna demonstrate the difference right now. Here's the slow setting. And here's the quick setting. P8 sets your maximum speed, so just keep this one at 100%. And finally, P9 controls the strength of the regen brake. The default setting is two, but for smoothness, I prefer setting number one. Now, the new segment we're doing, the reliability score. The eMove Touring has always had a reputation as a reliable scooter, so it was no surprise when it took the win in our most reliable scooters video in the under $800 category, scoring a stratospheric 9.4 out of 10. This is the third highest score in our entire database, behind the Apollo Air 2023 and the U-Scooters GT Sport. The Touring score is boosted by having a solid rear tire, drum slash regen rear brake, UL listing, IP54 water resistance rating, having name brand LG battery cells, and being relatively easy to repair. Let's check out performance. We've scientifically tested the top speed of more than 160 scooters now, and with a top speed of 27.1 miles per hour, the Touring is the fastest scooter we've tested that costs less than $800. That's actually higher than its specified top speed of 25 miles per hour. On our hilly range test course, I covered 20.8 miles, which is enough for even the longest commutes. The Touring also out accelerates all of the comparison scooters with a zero to 15 time of just 4.4 seconds. But where it shines best is hill climbing, reaching the top of our test hill in just 13.1 seconds. For the money, this is the strongest single motor hill climber we've tested, even out climbing much more expensive scooters like the Ninebot Max G2, which takes 13.7 seconds. Braking performance is not bad considering it only has a single drum slash regen brake at the rear wheel. It stops from 15 miles per hour in 18.5 feet. It's not as good as scooters with dual brakes, but that also means you can grab the rear brake as hard as you want without worrying about going over the handlebars. I also like that it's possible to engage just the regen brake by squeezing the lever lightly. Portability is very good with a tested weight of 41 pounds and its folding handlebars. It gets exceptionally small considering how much range and how much speed you get. Just be sure to get it latched all the way up before you ride. Let's see how the Touring stacks up against our other favorite similarly priced scooters. The scooter that's most often compared to the Touring is the Fluid Free Ride Horizon. They look similar, but the Touring has more deck room and doesn't have the carrying handle at the back. The Touring wins on performance with stronger acceleration, hill climbing, and top speed. The Segway 9x F2 Pro has a more modern feel with features like turn signals in the handlebars, but it has a 21% smaller battery. Surprisingly, the range is about the same, but the difference shows up in the performance with the Touring having about an eight mile per hour faster top speed. The F2 is also the least portable of the group at 22 inches wide when folded. The Touring on the other hand is only eight inches wide when folded. The new KQI3 Pro is another modern scooter we love with very high build quality, but also the heaviest of the group weighing in at 45 pounds and has the lowest tested top speed of 18.6 miles per hour. On the other hand, it's dual disc brakes give it the shortest stopping distance of the group, stopping from 15 miles per hour in just 10 feet flat. Despite being the least expensive scooter in Voro Motors lineup, the Evo Touring is a big step up in performance and rider weight capacity from most beginner scooters, but still easier to ride 
and lighter than most dual motor scooters. So it hits sort of a sweet spot for commuting performance per dollar. And we like that it's built to last and easy to maintain, both important qualities for commuter scooters. If you're shopping for a commuter scooter in the $800 price range, or just want a scooter that's a noticeable step up from your typical beginner scooter, we think the Touring is worth a look. Thanks for watching. I'm Paul from Electric Scooter Guide. Have a great ride.